applications uh, into a multi-screen uh, framework. Uh, but first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Nils Christian Roshenelsen. It's a long and unpronounceable Norwegian name. I'm sorry about that. I have been working almost seven years now with, uh, with Qt uh, through a number of different companies. Uh, I started uh, with Trolltech um, in uh, 2008, but uh, right after I started, we were acquired by a company called Nokia, and we were part of Nokia for quite some time. Uh, then, as a part of the commercial transition of the Cube licensing business from uh, Digia to uh, from Nokia to Digia. Uh, I was transferred to Digia and have been working there for uh, a while and now I'm working for the Cube company um, as Lars is also doing and um, uh, the Cube company is a wholly owned subsidiary of, of Digia so we are still within Digia but focusing now entirely and exclusively on, on Cube development. I started um, as a support engineer, so I have been working uh, in the support team with, with technical requests and aspects uh, for uh, quite a while, but then I pretty quickly moved into the sales team and I was working as a sales engineer, uh, helping customers uh, succeed with Qt, helping customers understand how they can use Qt and what they can get out of it. Uh, from there, uh, the last uh, half year, I've actually been working as a product manager. So right now, I'm uh, working on uh, further developing the product offering of Cube. And in that role, I'm very grateful to be able to meet a lot of users of Cube uh, and a lot of evaluators and try to understand what are their challenges and how can Cube actually help them be successful in a very, very competitive software development world. So the concept of this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about the industry challenges. Uh, where are we today and what are the uh, problems that are facing device creators and application developers? And uh, then we'll look a little bit about uh, the state of the technology and how Cube can solve some of those challenge, the challenges that we're seeing. I want to highlight from Cube four concepts uh, for the multi-screen world that makes Cube a powerful framework uh, for a future-proof strategy, a strategy that can enable your software to uh, live long and prosper, to be successful, not just right now, but also into the future. Um, I think a lot of you uh, know many things about Cube already, and a lot of the talks here today are going to cover various technical aspects, uh, dig deep into uh, some of the new features and some of, some of the new and cool things. So I would like to take a little bit of time to look at some of the stable and, and well-working, solid foundations of Qt. Uh, and uh, I want to highlight why Qt is, is a great framework for the future. Uh, the four concepts that I want to be mainly talking about are uh, the power of C++ and how Qt utilizes C++ to its uh, full extent and, and really in a good way. Um, QML, uh, the Qt meta object language that we've implemented to allow modern applications to have beautiful user interfaces. Hybrid application development is also something very important. And in this context, I'm talking about web native hybrid. So bridging the gap between native code and HTML um, and the web. And then uh, interconnectivity, uh, cloud enabled applications, and um, that's also in, a, in many ways a hybrid approach, but, but cloud and, and backend enabled applications. So, uh, Lars already mentioned that we have two main products. We're um, talking about Cube for application development and Cube for device creation. And those are two of our three main focus areas. We are really um, 
putting a lot of effort behind those two. Qt is a very wide product that supports a lot of use cases, a lot of types of applications, but we're breaking it down into developing along two main paths. It's application development and device creation. But there is also a third aspect that is extremely important, um, and it comes not as a separate product or not as a separate uh, downloadable file, but as an inherent part of the Qt offering. And that is the ability to create your own software development frameworks, your own SDKs, and further extend the usability of Qt onto your own, your users, your third party developers, so that they can also add content and create uh, applications for your platform. So I'll be talking a little bit about uh, this in light of uh, the challenges we see in the, in the industry today. And I want to start talking a little bit about the automotive. Uh, there's a number of interesting uh, car companies and um, use cases today of Qt in the automotive. But before we look at, and I think Lars already showed some really interesting slides uh, of, uh, for example, Tesla. Um, but we need to understand where the automotive industry is today and uh, where they are going. Five years ago, um, or six, seven years ago, when Trolltech were acquired by Nokia, we uh, have a very good understanding of the mobile phone technology. And I think, and I see today when I talk to the leaders in the automotive industry, that the automotive industry today is very much where the mobile phone industry was five to seven years ago. Um, today, the main product from the automotive companies are the cars, and software development is mainly an afterthought. It's not the most important part of the interior, it's not the most important part of the car, uh, but that is something that is rapidly changing. Uh, five to seven years ago, Nokia, at least in Europe, was the largest mobile phone company by far. Uh, it was, it had around 80% of market share in some segments. It was what everyone wanted, it was what everyone had. But today, Nokia don't make phones anymore as a separate company. They sold the handset division to Microsoft, uh, and, and Nokia is not an attractive brand in the mobile phone industry anymore. And what happened there? Nokia had a great grip on their customers. They knew exactly what their customers wanted, and they were making very specialized products targeting um, targeting different seg segments of the market. So they had one device for businessmen. They had one device for uh, for young kids. They had one device for very many different segments, and they had very independent development of all of these products. There was little code sharing, there was little idea sharing between the teams, uh, and they made a lot of revenue because they could target a lot of different user groups. But then what happened was that Apple changed that whole business model by making only one product and having all of the differentiation happen in software. So the way that you would use an iPhone is not that you have different iPhones for the business user and the gamer and the kids, but you install different applications. Now, the automotive industry is a lot in the same state. They're making very different devices for the different segments. Um, but users are becoming more and more accustomed and expecting to have fluid user interfaces, to have a lot of these fancy features and more and more the screen is becoming what is deciding what type of car you want to buy. And this is a major, uh, not necessarily problem, but it's a major challenge for a lot of companies that need to change their development model. So, very siloed development efforts, very long development cycles. It takes three to five years to, to create a new product and bring it to market, while an application takes three to five weeks, uh, and you can move a lot faster. Um, so what we see is that uh, the modern user interfaces of cars, and this is just an example, it will work for any 
industry, I think the trends are exactly the same. It's the same in the set of box industry. It's the same in the medical industry. Um, that we are expecting features, we are expecting over-the-air updates, we are expecting uh, to be able to configure the user interfaces much more to our liking, uh, and we want to have multimedia support, uh, and there are so many new features, and one of the most important ones is to connect multiple devices as well, because a lot of this information isn't very interesting while you are driving the car, for instance, uh, it's the same, a lot of information from my set of box isn't necessarily interesting on the TV while I'm watching, but I want to bring my phone and I want to get more information on different screens. So you need to be able to build systems that can connect with those, bring your own devices, those additional units. Okay, so these are, are some of the challenges that we are understanding and that we are uh, being asked um, to help the industry of solving. Uh, and there's a number of uh, technologies in Qt that really helps us to solve this. First of all, it's a really powerful uh, C++ API that allows you to create native applications that are running very fast and very efficient. Um, we have in Qt five of the top 10 Fortune 500 companies that use Qt. Uh, some of the largest Swiss banks are using Qt, some of the largest German um, industrial automation companies are using Qt, and this is because of that solid, stable foundation of 20 years of developing uh, C++ code. And Qt is a 20-year-old product, but that doesn't mean it's old or outdated. We are, uh, of course, adapting all of the new features from C++11 to C++14, uh, and making sure that all of the new innovation is also there um, for our users to use. Now, being 20 years old, uh, we've had, I, I briefly talked about Nokia, but we've been doing mobile for a lot longer than that. And, and one of the key aspects of this uh, native performance and of this nativeness is cross-platform. Cross-platform is extremely important but not necessarily because we want to target uh, five or 10 different operating systems at the same time. A lot of our customers say we only want to target one operating system and have one device at the same time. But it's, a, it's an insurance for the future because as we've seen with the mobile phone industry, it's changing very rapidly. And I don't know what it will look like in five years from now, but I can guarantee you that the market share between the current vendors will not look the same three, four, or five years into the future. And it's going to be extremely costly to rewrite all of your iOS and Android applications onto a new operating system uh, if you don't have a cross-platform framework that can ease that transition. Uh, cross-platform also means that your software uh, is not only running uh, as a standalone software anymore. It's much more of a service and users are expecting these services to be available anywhere. Uh, so cross-platform means that you can target those devices that, uh, that the customers are asking for. Another very good example of efficient use of, of the C++ APIs and cross-platform uh, from one of our customers is uh, a company called Navico. We actually have a demo of this out at the Cube Company stand outside of this hall. And this is uh, a marine navigation device. Um, I'm saying Navico, but yet the logo here reads um, Lawrence, and that's because Navico has a number of different brands. They're making marine navigation devices, but they're, uh, they have different brands that target different industries, different user groups. They have different user interfaces, different uh, sizes, and different features, but it's all the same C++ platform underneath. So 80% of their code is shared between all devices. All their innovation will make it into all of the products. They have one software development team that can drive four different brands targeting different markets. And then they simply put different user interfaces on top of this cube-based C++ application and, and get very different products. 
Uh, and this we're seeing in industries such as medical, such as automotive, uh, in-flight systems, in-flight infotainment systems. You want to have small screens for, for economy class, but large screens with more features for, for the business and first class users. <coughs> but it's extremely costly to develop different product lines. So using the same base technology will save you a lot of money. Cross-platform also means that then you can use Android, for instance, for some of the cheaper devices and custom embedded Linux devices for the more powerful ones. And then talking about the user interfaces, uh, the best way of making those is with uh, the QQuick and QML features of Q. This means that you can very easily utilize OpenGL to the most powerful way you can get the most out of your hardware. Uh, when we created Q 20 years ago, OpenGL was not something that was around. Uh, even five years ago, OpenGL was expensive and in most embedded devices, you didn't find it. So Q was never created and optimized for OpenGL to begin with, but that's why we introduced Q quick, so that we actually have uh, a fully OpenGL accelerated uh, user interface language that allows you to create very powerful and nice looking uh, user interfaces. Um, traditionally, Qt has always worked on a native look and feel basis. So on a Windows machine, it looks like Windows. On a Mac, it looks like Mac, etc. But in the modern world of embedded devices, of software running in cars and in medical equipment, there is no native look in an embedded Linux device. There is no native look and feel of a medical device. So it's extremely simple to create your custom user interfaces. And our main strategy with cute, uh, quick user interfaces is that you should create your own uh, custom UI, your own corporate identity. Uh, so the applications will look like your company, like your uh, user experience, not like Microsoft's or, or Apple's. Native and hybrid development is also something that becomes very important. Uh, a lot of people we see, especially in the set-of-box industry, they want to create applications, application platforms where uh, third-party application developers can add extensions, can add apps and, and features to their, uh, to their system. Uh, HTML5 is one good way of doing that. And uh, we have Cube WebKit as a great, or Cube Web Engine as a great way of adding those features. It's simple and it's very powerful. Uh, so one of the things that I would like to say is that you never get anything for, for free. Uh, so HTML5 is a good way of writing applications, but you still need to contact and be close uh, in touch with content providers to actually get high quality apps. Just because there's a huge number of HTML5 applications available doesn't mean that those simple apps will add value to a platform. So actually getting in contact with content providers that deliver services that your end users want is more important than enabling 1,000 applications that have very little value. Um, one example of this is a company called DCC Labs uh, that are making set-of-box software. And they are using a very powerful combination of QC++ of QML user interfaces and of Cube Web Engine to power uh, 